The good news is you can do this. And I'm going to encourage you, whatever you've been through, my prayers are with you, my thoughts are with you. Hi, I'm Dr. Rola, clinical psychologist, and this is part two of what to do if you have a disagreement with your young adult. Before I continue in this video, I would love you to subscribe, press the notification bell so that you would have access to my videos as soon as I release them. This is part two of the video and I encourage you to go back and review part one and you will find out that these recommendations I'm making in today's video is based on the type of development process that your young adult is going through how we need to fine tune the way we parent when they have now moved to the young adulthood stage. I want you to pay attention, and I think this is number five, pay attention to how you manage disagreements when it comes to your value system. Many of us parents have certain values that we have instilled in our children early on. If you're a person of faith like myself, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian since I was a teenager. That was part of their upbringing. My daughters, 23 and 28, we went to church. We read the scriptures. Those are values that I had, I have. If you get to a time or at a point where your young adult is disagreeing with you majorly on your value system, what do you do? I'm going to enjoin you to listen to what they have to say, why they are ascribing to these values that are opposing to how you raise them, and let that be the opportunity for you to share what you believe with them, what your convictions are, and do it in a way that is respectable. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be frustrated. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have periods where you're upset. But parenting is also a test. Are you really sure about why you have those values? Why do you have those values? What are the benefits of those values? This is your opportunity to rehash those with your child. Because when your child was young, you probably just told them what to do and they did it. And now you're providing explanation and you may even be providing examples of how this has been beneficial to you. This is the time to do that. So you want to listen rather than push them away. You want to share your own conviction. You want to acknowledge that you have no power to stop that person, that young adult from engaging in certain behaviors that may be inconsistent with your values, especially when they're no longer in your house. But you are not forced to create opportunities for that, those values to be practiced. So if I have a value, for instance, that um, about the way I want my child to engage with a future spouse, I may decide that when they come to my home, they're gonna be in separate rooms. Those are my own house rules. Everyone to their own is not my place to tell any parent what to do, but in my home, I'm not gonna accommodate my children who are married being in the same bedroom with their boyfriend. It's not something that I'm in, that I that is a value for me and I'm not going to enable them. But I cannot control what what my children do. So that's my place to not be an enabler but to be respectful. And then another thing along this point is for you to understand that you have a right to hold on to your own values and be proud of them. Many parents take on tremendous amount of shame over what their children are doing. And I know a lot of people blame parents for everything their children do. But the, the truth is that if you've done something wrong, we'll talk about that later, correct it. But what your child does is not ultimately your responsibility. You can't be taking 100% responsibility for every decision your child makes. If not, you might end up hurting yourself, being depressed. And that even shows your young adult that their actions has that kind of power over you to stop you from enjoying your life. Now, are there gonna be times when you're affected by emotionally? Yes, but I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit later in this video about what to do with them, so stick with me here. So the next thing you want to do, if you have a disagreement with your young adult, and I think this is number six, 
is I want you to look at the level of support that you're giving your young adult. Even though they're over the age of 18 and they're 23 and they're 28, I'm in my 50s. I need support. And I still benefit from support from my mother who is 78 in August, in the next few months. Everyone needs support. But I think as parents, we may not really be really doing a good job of measuring the support level that we're giving our young adult. Are we giving too much? where we're doing things for them that they should be doing for themselves. We're taking on roles and we're making phone calls and we're doing chores and we're doing so many things while they are doing less. And whenever anybody is not invested in something, they're not going to put in their effort. Are you fighting over something that you are more invested in than your young adult is invested in? The end of it is going to be a disaster. You're going to feel unappreciated as a parent. You're going to feel like you're being used. Are you giving too much support? Are you doing things that your young adult can do? And are you having a hard time disengaging and allowing your young adult to take on some challenges and even if they fall, be there to support them rather than preventing them from, fail, from failing? Are you giving too little support? Are you minimizing the challenges that your young adult is facing so much that you're assuming that, oh, you're okay, you shouldn't be depressed. Oh, no, everybody's been through it. Oh, I went through it at my age. What are you talking about? That could be a real problem because if your young adult is feeling overwhelmed, maybe they had a relationship breakup or they failed a class and you're diminishing the support that they need in that time and you're not giving it to them, you're assuming that they're old enough and you don't need to be there that could also be a problem. And so this is a balancing act because one day you could be giving too much and another day you could be giving too little. So you want to start to do a job of kind of listening and seeing what they tell you they can handle and set up a plan with your young adult. Okay, we're disagreeing over this. You said you're gonna do this. Can you do this? And if you do this, I'll do that. So see if there's some common ground there about what you can contribute, but more importantly, what are they going to do? Because it is their life, it is not yours. And how are you going to support them? Come up with a plan with them that is constructive over any issues you can agree on and let them know, I am here to support you, but this is not my life. And even if I take over, I'm doing you a disservice. I want you to take on the responsibility of adulthood. I know you can do it, but I've been through my challenges too. And when I have challenges, I ask for help please be willing to act for them so you have an open door policy. Some of us as parents give too much. And then when we disagree with the child, we pull all the support to punish them. And then when we're on friendly terms, we throw in ourselves in there again. And then we have this up and down relationship with the young adults. No, you really want your young adult to have, take ownership of their own journey. And you'll be more of a cheerleader and a support person. And you don't want to prevent your young adult from failing in anything. Anybody who does not fail in anything is going to be in trouble in the future because when they now come across challenges, they will not be able to handle it. The next point, number seven, is no comparing with other children. Absolutely not. You may have some children that have already made up their mind what they want to do from high school and they're smooth. And then you have this young person who is a little bit challenged as to where to go and how to go about it. You do yourself a disservice, not just by what you say, but the way you act by saying, your sister didn't have to go to this. Your brother, they knew what they were doing. And parents say this to me all the time. They say it to me and they say, I'm not telling my child that I'm comparing them, but your actions and the way you, you, you act towards the other child suggest that you favor that child because they had no challenges. The question is, are you resentful of your child because they have challenges? because life is full of challenges. And the fact that this other person is done well career-wise does not mean that they're not suffering from challenges in relationship or in other areas. So maybe you're overlooking the other challenges that the successful one in career is, is having. Because they're successful in career, you're overlooking their challenges and you're focused on one area and you're comparing. I beg you in the name of God, stop comparing. What resources does this young adult that you're having a disagreement with has have and are they making full use of it if they're making full use of it they're doing the best they can 
if they're learning disabled, you can't be comparing them with somebody who's not learning disabled. If they need a little bit help with time management, you can't resent them from that. Your job as a parent is not just to celebrate when things are perfect. You want to be there to help them to navigate the storms of life. So no comparing with other kids at all. I want you to give tremendous credit when your child makes effort and when they have a good attitude, even when they fail. Many young people are successful who never have challenges, who do very well. When they have relationship breaks up or challenges in the future, they are at more risk of going on a downward spiral because they don't know how to handle misfortune. It is not always bad for young adults to struggle. And the next point is, I want you to also then become vulnerable. This is number eight with your young adult. Now you're talking to an adult. They've seen you successful in your life. They've seen how well you've done. It may be helpful for you to show your child how you too have struggled in some areas of your life. Highlight the areas where you have failed. You didn't always make A's. I highlighted some challenges I had academically when I was in university when I was helping to run my mother's business and my mother was ill for a while and I was in university. Yes, I graduated early, but my grades were not always good. I showed my grades to my kids to let them know I haven't always done well, but look at me now. I've done well, I've overcome it. To show them and not shame them when they are challenged. Another thing I want you to do in the area of vulnerability is I want you to be honest if you have not been if you are not being consistent as a parent. Many times as parents, we spit out values and what we, as, what we think they should be. But our lives has been inconsistent with what we have said. And now your child is a young adult. You can't pull the wood over their eyes. They can see that your words and your actions don't match. I want you to acknowledge that. And while you're disagreeing with your young adult and you want them to grow in their lives, you to start your own personal journey of growth everybody can change something and i i tell you and i i tell you confidently that over time your young adult will begin to see you being more consistent between consistent between what you say and what you do and then the very last thing if your child has witnessed abuse in this point eight physical abuse sexual abuse domestic violence between you and your spouse things that has happened in their childhood that is traumatic and you've ignored it, this is the time to acknowledge it. If they say they're mad about it, don't dismiss it. Acknowledge you were wrong and begin to talk about ways in which you can provide help right now for them. But also I encourage you, go get help for yourself. Even if it's therapy once a month and let your child know, I'm getting help for it too so I can better know how to help you to heal. In this number eight, you're showing vulnerability. You're showing you're not perfect. And that way you remove the shame from your child who may be challenged that they're not doing as well. And so now let me give just general suggestions. I've shared with you eight points. Listen, listen, listen to your child. Even though what you're hearing is frustrating. If you get mad, you raise your voice, you go off. Create opportunities to get down, to get your temper and your emotions down again and listen. In between the lines, read between the, listen between the lines of what they're saying. Some of them are suicidal. Some of them are depressed. Some of them were bullied in school. Some of them were abused and discriminated against because they're dark skin. You never know. They may not tell you right there. They may be masking it with other things. So listen, listen, listen. Monitor what you say. Try not to use cross words. Use definitive words like you're a failure. You're not going to make it. Do not do name calling talk about the action don't give your child labels and i can't say this enough pray <laughs> pray pray i have done a lot more praying as a parent of adult children than i did when they were younger and i want to encourage you you're the most influential person in the life of your child and i want you to hold on to that hold on to that faith that god gave you the blessing of birthing them either as a father or mother and God is not taking that power away from you and even though they're individuating and some of them may be going in paths that you don't like keep on praying and practice these steps they will see your humanity if you're a person of faith they will see faith faith living not just speaking 
and they want to emulate the life you, that you're living and also get a life enjoy yourself let them see that mommy is enjoying her life daddy is enjoying his life even though they may not be entirely happy what i'm doing and i know that by the grace of god all our children in spite of the challenges i'm facing are going to come out well but we can't let go of them we can't let go of them in our actions and the way we manage our affect and we cannot let go of them as well in the place of prayer i want you to share this subscribe like it and i will talk to you next time thank you so much for listening